Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start this presentation by welcoming the students and staff of the Illinois Human Performance Project to our pre recorded nutrition discussion today. My name is Christine Giordamo, and I'm a registered dietitian and a certified specialist in sports dietetics. Although we can't be together at the annual conference this year, I am so very excited and honored to be able to contribute through e-learning to enhance knowledge about nutrition and how it can benefit our student athletes throughout their careers. So I'll start with a brief introduction of my different roles as a registered dietitian and then introduce and welcome our special guest. <laughs> So I have the pleasure of working with elite athletes in a few different settings. I do some consulting for the Chicago White Sox and providing some nutrition counseling and some menu development and assistance there. I also teach a master's level course with nutrition and human performance at Loyola University Chicago to some exercise science um, uh, majors. And then I have a private practice called Busy Bean Nutrition, where I assist athletes and active individuals of all ages and abilities to improve their health and performance. And lastly, I consult with Northwestern University Athletics to provide medical nutrition therapy and support the performance of all of our Division I athletes. Um, so at Northwestern, I had the pleasure of meeting and working with our speaker Amine today. So I'll do a little bit of an introduction um, for her and then let her um, kind of enlighten us with all of her information and knowledge that she has to share today. So Amina Yujil, born and raised in Istanbul, Turkey, started fencing when she was 15. As a part of the Turkish national team, she participated in many international competitions, including European and World Championships. Amina was also a student athlete at Northwestern from 2014 to 2019, during which she was a two-time NCAA champion Championship qualifier, 2018 NCAA Midwest Regional Champion, three-time All-MFC, and three-time Academic All-Big Ten. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All of his accolades are awesome. So um, I had the pleasure of getting to know Mine during 2018 and 2019 by assisting her in navigating some of the nutrition landscape at Northwestern. So as you have heard, she's had a very successful collegiate career and remains at Northwestern to complete her master's studies at the Medill School of Journalism. Correct? Okay. <laughs> I didn't mess it up. Um, I'd like to give you a, a warm welcome and my personal gratitude to Amine for joining us today. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Fantastic. So um, when we were marketing for some of this, this pre-recorded nutrition presentation, um, the students were asked to provide some questions, um, to provide some just really like what what you want to know um, during during the presentation today and I'm happy to have the opportunity to be able to work in some of those questions so we have some questions that we'll ask Amina to get her um, get her insight and, and whatnot about her career at Northwestern when it comes to the nutrition landscape but we'll also work in some of the student questions too so it should be a fun time awesome okay, so we will jump into some of these questions today so the first one is actually a student question um, what made you decide to start fencing yeah, so I wish I had an exciting story for this, <laughs> but I don't. Um, so I grew up in Turkey and I moved here for college. So when I started fencing, I was still in Turkey. Um, and honestly, I just woke up one day. Well, I come from a line of athletes. Like my mom was a slalom skier. Um, she got injured right before she was qualifying for the Olympics. And my dad was also an athlete. Um, so they always put me in different sports, but I was never like liking any of them necessarily and then one day I woke up and I was like mom I think I want to fence and she was like what does that even mean <laughs> and then I kind of did some research and then showed her like what it looked like and where I could start doing it and then she was like okay you can do it so that's kind of how I started fantastic it's it's kind of enlightening how you just sort of picked it up one day and you know just decided that did you see it on see it on tv or did you hear about it in any way shape or form did you or you no. watch the olympics what happened that's like the weird thing like i don't think i don't recall seeing it or anywhere or anything i just it was like it was like this thing that oh, i was like, in your head you know <laughs> yeah i was like i just want to do it and she was like okay <laughs> and it, it turned out great for me so yeah. I guess it was good so the transition then from, you know, from growing up in, in Turkey and then moving to the United States, um, in regards to some of the food choices and availability, how long did it take you to feel comfortable in the new environment? Did, was it totally new food choices to you? Anything kind of come up for you there? And, and how long really did it take you to, to transition? I wouldn't say it was completely new. I mean, 
obviously when I first moved here, I was staying at the dorms because we were, you're required to the first year. Um, and I was eating at the dining hall and I, I could always find stuff, um, you know, that I felt comfortable eating, like, you know, grilled chicken, maybe a hamburger, like sa sauteed vegetables, stuff, stuff like that, that like, you know, were a big part of my um, regular meal schedule anyways. Um, obviously, I, I miss like home cooked Turkish foods that my mom would do and stuff, but I don't think it was a, it was a big transition for me. Um, just because I was already eating those things as an athlete as a part of my training. Um, so yeah, it didn't took me too long to adjust and figure out what I was um, going to be eating every day, like day in and day out. That's great. I know some of the home cooked meals, probably going home for some of those breaks was, <laughs> was a yeah. godsend to be able to, you know, actually have some, some foods that you like, but it's, it, it's, I mean, with the dining halls, it is something to navigate for sure. Um, you know, I think that it's one thing that we do meet with a lot of the athletes about when they first come is really just how to navigate that new environment. So it's not, you know, that you can use your nutrition resources, you know, to meet with a dietitian to make sure that you can, and with any new environment, moving to a new country, going to a dorm, you know, going in a new environment, I think there's going to be different food choices available, but finding some things that you're familiar with and then starting to slowly introduce those things that maybe you're not so familiar with, I think is really important. So, um, so that's great. Uh, speaking of the dining halls, did you find it particularly difficult to eat healthfully there? Or do you think it's relatively easy to navigate if you kind of know what you're looking for? I mean, I think it was definitely a little bit more difficult than what I had at home or even now when I get to cook for myself just because you don't get to pick what's going to be on the menu. Like, you know, what is out there is out there and you just have to make a conscious choices, I think, to make sure you're picking the right things for your body, but also for like, you know, just to stay in shape, but also to get the energy that you need for practice that you have to go afterwards or, you know, or that you're fueling after practice, whatever it is. Um, so in, in that sense, I, I guess it was a little bit difficult just to, you know, not be tempted by the pizza every day that's out there or, you know, um, the dessert that they put out, um, just because I don't want to be eating all of that every single day and just be making sure that I'm also like, you know, getting my vegetables in and everything else. Um, so in that, to, to control, in, in terms of controlling yourself, I guess it was a little bit hard. Um, but other than that, like, I, I think there's always a way to find things that are like, that, that are going to be useful for you as an athlete and, in dining hall as well. I, I don't think it's like, oh, you either eat here or you don't eat. You, you either eat or you don't. Like, I think there's always ways to manage. You can always make a sandwich for yourself or something like that. There's always a salad bar. Um, so I think it's just a, it's, it's just a matter of being conscious of what you're choosing and, and managing that. Perfect. And I, I totally agree. And I think that it's so easy to be able to go in and kind of be distracted by all of the things that are happening. So I think working, you know, working with your athletic trainers or working with your dietitian, whoever you have access to is going to be important to make sure that that transition, that transition goes well and that you know exactly how to build your winning plate. So um, you know, speaking of, of moving out on your own kind of after the dining halls, did you find it easy, challenging, difficult to learn how to cook and prepare your own foods? Or what advice might you give student athletes who are still in, in high school or, you know, gearing up for college? What advice would you give them and how to prepare for that transition? I think for me, it was more, it was easier than it, it is for most people just because I come, I mean, Turkish culture is very big on food. In, um, in my household and in my family, you learn to cook from a really young age. Um, so I was very well prepared <laughs> to move out on my own in terms of like nutrition and food than I think most people are in college age. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of tips, I would say definitely, you know, while you're still at home and have the support of your parents, I would still, I would say, you know, try cooking and try learning some basic things that, you know, is always going to be, um, like there when you are hungry and you're like moving out you know just even just just like learning how to make an omelet or cooking eggs or just like you know cooking a chicken and like sauteing vegetables like even simple things like that go a long way because then when you move out and then now you're wanting to cook different things you have those basic skills and it it gives you you know the basis to um learn how to cook more stuff on your own and in your own time 
Absolutely. And you, when it comes to fueling for performance, I think everyone thinks of these like grand meals and having, you know, all these ingredients and whatnot. And really it could just be simple as scrambling some eggs and cutting up some fruit and, you know, and building a plate and, and putting some toast on your plate. So it doesn't have to be anything super complicated. So starting with the basics, like you mentioned, I think is, is more than enough to get you started. And then you can kind of follow up and do more challenging things as you go on. But, you know, being able to boil some water <laughs> and, and, you know, scramble an egg is probably some good, some good basic stuff to get that you don't want to learn what you don't want to have to learn when you're 21 or 22. You want to probably have those things ironed out before you before you leave home for sure. Awesome. So let's move into some kind of performance questions in relationship to nutrition. So how do you feel that nutrition helped you know, your fencing career or during your competitions? Did you feel that nutrition played a big role in that, a small role in that? And, um, and what, would you, what would you say was maybe uh, the one most important nutrition concept to remember while you were fencing? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like I was always aware of, you know, eating healthy and making sure I'm getting like enough um, food in to give me energy, but also, you know, the, the vitamins and all that that I need. But like when I started working with you, something that I was really focusing on was um, fencing competitions take like basically all day. So we'll, we'll start warming up at seven and we usually won't be done till five, six p.m. Um, and I was a starter um, for like my for like the past for the three years before I graduated. So that meant I had to be ready to go all day long in case, you know, well, I'm already fencing most of the bouts, but then in case some, something happens to someone and someone is injured, that means I have to be ready to go to be put in. So that means I have to be, you know, fueling all day long in a way that's not going to make me like um, feeling like heavy and I can't move, but also not like, oh, I don't have enough energy to make a lunge or go down the strip another time. Um, so that was something that was really important for me and that I had to keep in mind all the time as I started becoming a crucial part of the team to make sure that I was ready to go at all times. And that meant, you know, scheduling meeting with you, with meetings with you and trying out different things. I remember, I mean, we tried a couple of different, you know, um, plans for competitions to see, you know, what worked best for me um, to be fueling throughout the day. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that, that we talked about too was not only having the energy to do all the things that you're doing and, and maintaining that throughout the course of that long day, but also focusing and concentrating, you know, is so difficult. You know, it's a very, um, I, you know, I didn't know a lot about fencing before I came to Northwestern. So I had to learn a little bit about the sport too, but um, just how many bouts and how many different decisions that you have to make sort of in the moment, I think is so challenging and one of the really challenging aspects of the sport. So being able to make that quick decision making requires fuel and it's the I mean the difference between winning and losing you know is so minute um, is, is kind of what I learned and so being able to keep that focus and concentration up is something that you know nutrition can play a huge role in too so um, I think that what you mentioned is is really awesome so can you tell us a little bit about what your kind of what routine you fell into as far as what you would eat before during and after competition yeah um, so I'd usually keep my breakfast like pretty solid I think just because for me that like takes me throughout the whole day mm -hmm. um, because when I'm competing sometimes it's not that easy to get in a get a lunch in um, but so for breakfast I would usually do eggs um, maybe a bagel with cream cheese um, some orange juice I would definitely get some water in <laughs> as I as I start the day that's something that's really important because we have a lot of gear on and fencing underneath that all day you definitely sweat a lot so like making sure to like hydrate before I even go in to warm up um yeah and I'll definitely get enough fruit whether it's like a banana or an orange or an apple something something just like you know to complete the meal for me mm -hmm. um and then once I start warming up well once I'm done warming up I would definitely get in some like the chewies um that the trainers would you know provide for us um and really, once I started going, once I started competing, I definitely was trying to get in something, even if it's just one bite, like every 40-ish minutes, yeah. just to make sure that like, not only am I aware that like I'm putting something in my body, but also like, you know, I'm, I'm keeping the energy up and like making sure that like, I mean, I would also get like water with that too. So that making sure that I'm also hydrated at the same time. So once we have the lunch break, it would, we would usually have sandwiches and stuff. So I would try to eat like half and not 
all of it. Um, just because if I eat too much, you know, that's, that means maybe that I can't move the next <laughs> out very well. Focusing on um, your digestion, right? <laughs> yeah, but also making sure that I get some, like, you know, solid carbs in just to keep me going through the day. And then I would continue later with the, the 30 to 40 minute, like, chewies, pretzels, um, maybe like a bite of banana, maybe like an orange or clementine, something like that. Um, and then again, like hydrating. Um, throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, I'll definitely have a big meal, <laughs> a big dinner, um, much deserved, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I think that's usually what it looks like for me. Yeah. And I think you know, you hit on so many important concepts there with making sure that you're building kind of that big winning plate before the training and some carbs and some protein and some fruits and veggies on there. And then really focusing on fluids, lighting up to it, carbs and fluids throughout to make sure that your stomach feels okay. And then really focusing on that recovery meal afterwards with good, again, good protein, good carbs and good fruits and vegetables, because you got to turn around and do it the next day. <laughs> A lot of times, and you know, these tournaments can last, you know, multiple days. And so you kind of have to make sure that you don't ignore or some of those fueling concepts. Otherwise, day two comes and all of a sudden you're, you know, totally shot and you can't do what you need to do on the second day as well. So I think that's something to learn for a lot of our student athletes in high school who have back-to-back -back sessions. You know, they're jumping from lacrosse practice to soccer practice or, you know, something, they go swim after school and then they're jumping to something else, you know, some lifting or something. So I think it's important to recognize from session to session to be able to recover, but also if you have tournaments, basketball tournaments over the winter you know you might have two games on one day and three games the next so those are important concepts to keep in mind just to prioritize your nutrition and I think you know you did such a great job at doing that um, and really saw some success out of that too so um, so that's great awesome awesome advice so moving on, uh, I know that you had navigated some injuries during your career. This is common, you know, in athletics, injuries are kind of, you know, something we don't wish to happen, but something that does happen. Um, and so, uh, you know, you, like I said, you don't have to, no pressure on, on getting into any details, but can you discuss the concept of being resilient uh, through those injuries, maybe mentally and uh, physically along as, um, along with the role that you feel like nutrition plays into your recovery and resiliency? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so I had two, like, serious big injuries that put me out for, like, a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was actually my freshman year. Um, I went down with, I had three stress fractures on my tibia, which put me out for a qu quiet some time, like, almost a year, um, because at first we didn't necessarily want to get surgery, because the surgery is kind of a you know, not necessarily the way you want to go with this kind of injury, um, but then because it didn't heal. And actually, that was a great time for me to be also applying nutrition because um, I was really working on like, you know, calcium and that kind of stuff to making sure that like those those fractures were healing on them on their own. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful. So I had to get surgery for that. And that was definitely I they I've been told that one of the worst surgeries you can get as an athlete and has a has a really long healing time mm -hmm. um and to be honest I wasn't necessarily I think very healthy during that first one um because I mean it was really emotionally and mentally tough for me just because I had moved from a different country here to fence and you know pursue what I wanted to do and all of a sudden I couldn't even like walk um I couldn't I couldn't do anything that I wanted to be doing and that was really tough on me so I think during that time I really kind of neglected a lot of things um, for myself, um, which wasn't a good choice, <laughs> but I also learned a lot from them. Uh, and I did eventually come back. Um, I came back way faster than most people thought I was going to come back, which was good. Um, and I definitely owe that to supportive staff too. Um, but yeah, once I came back, I think that taught me a lot of things, which then I, um, was able to use in my second injury. So actually two years ago during NCAA championships, I, kind of tore my wrist apart. There was like really nothing left attached, <laughs> which was not fun and also very painful. So I had to get um, a surgery for that as well to just repair my whole wrist. Um, but I think going into that surgery and injury, I was way more aware of what I needed to be doing. So I was definitely, I had a way more positive outlook, which I truly believe helped me, you know, heal faster. Um, you know, I think it's, I, it was so important for me to be like, okay, you know what, like this happened. I'm getting what I need to heal it. 
um, and I'm going to do every single thing I need to do to heal after the surgery. You know, I'm going to eat right. I'm going to take my vitamins. I'm going to do my rehab, whatever it is that I have to do. I'm going to be on schedule and programmed to get there because for me, it was like I had to come back in time for the season because this was my last season and I had already used up my fifth year for, before on that other injury. Um, so I think definitely like keeping a positive outlook and it's, and it's so much harder to do than, you know, said, but keeping a positive outlook and, you know, staying in that mentality of, you know what, like, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. This happened and it happens to a lot of people, but I'm going to work through it. And, you know, I have the support that I need and I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get back on the strip in time. Um, nutrition, I think was definitely also a big part for me. And the second one, um, I was doing a lot of like vitamins and like the gelatin gelatin thing. I don't, maybe you want to talk more about that. <laughs> um, but that was definitely, since mine was like a tendon related injury the second time, that was important for me in, in terms of healing. Um, so just kind of, you know, following whatever your um, doctors and like dietitians are telling you, like those things help and, and ignoring them isn't going to help you at all. That's what I learned because I did that in the first one. Uh, and I saw that it took me longer to, to come back from it. Um, but then also, again, just keeping like, you know, training the way I could. You know, maybe I wasn't, I wasn't able to run or fence the first like six, five, six months, but I was able to do other things and rehab. And those go a long way when you're trying to come back from serious injuries like that. Absolutely. I... I think some of the things that you hit on are so important with having a positive outlook is obviously really important. However, also taking advantage of all your resources to help with that, I think being able to meet with doctors and dietitians and sports psychs or whoever is on your treatment team, I think in order to get the tools to be able to move through that injury, the more that you're confident with what you're doing, I think with nutrition, with training and rehab, the more confidence you have to be able to move forward with your plan and to kind of, you know, hit your, keep hitting your marks moving forward for, for recovery. So I think some of the things that you hit on there are important. You know, we would talk through, you know, if you recall, I'm sure you do, we would talk through kind of what you were eating on a daily basis, um, you know, maybe look at some of those nutrients of concern when you do have a bone, you know, healing injury, or you do have a tendon related injury, really talking about bone health and how calcium and vitamin D are so important in that. And, you know, looking at some of the new research about tendon health and some of the collagen and gelatin things that are coming out on there. So I think that, you know, meeting meeting with professionals not only helps you iron out how to eat and what to eat and how to change your nutrition day to day, but it also helps us get into the nitty gritty of what vitamins and minerals are going to be really important to make sure we're hitting the mark either with food choices or if we need to supplement with something else. Um, you know, kind of doing it on your own is really hard. There's so much research out there. There's so many different conflicting ideologies about how to eat and what to do. So being able to really touch base with some of those professionals, like I mentioned, gives you the confidence to be able to move forward. So I think that you can then focus on your rehab, your recovery, and you don't need to be bogged down with all of this, you know, what should I eat and how do I eat, um, I think is one really important aspect of it. And you came back and you did great and, you know, you're still going. So I think that's, you know, just um, one example of, of a way that you can see a story of somebody who had a couple of really kind of devastating injuries be able to come back and recover from that. So that's awesome. So let's move into some of the questions from the students, which is, is funny because these are things that I get a, a lot. But uh, one of the questions was, how do you balance, you know, with everything that you've talked about, how do you balance your schedule with school and fencing and then managing to have a social life on top of that and experience, you know, college for what it is, but also how do you make sure that you fit nutrition into that? And what advice would you give for athletes on, um, on navigating all of that balance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie. It's, um, it gets tough at, at times. Um, but I also think it, it's completely doable and manageable. Uh, I think the hardest year is the first year when, um, you know, when you're getting used to your schedule um, with your new team, um, you know, getting used to a new environment, getting used to like college classes, which is a whole different beast than, you know, high school, obviously. But also, you know, have, having to, or like, trying to manage social life, a different kind of social life that comes with college life. You know, you're far from home and you have friends around you all the time and parties and like all these events and you know, it, it can get tough. Um, but like I said, I, I think, I, I completely believe that it's doable for everyone. Um, I think for me, 
um, as the years went by, I had a pretty clear sense of what my priorities are. And I think for different people, those are different things. And that's something that individually you're going to have to sit down and think about and talk with your coaches and with your family or whatever, whoever you, you trust with that. For me, um, once I got injured and I, and I was able to come back, fencing definitely took priority just because you know, I, I, I felt what it meant to not be able to do that. And I, and I knew that while I could do that, I wanted to get the most out of it. And I knew I wanted to, you know, go to the NCAAs, which is not necessarily very easy in any sport, but also in fencing, because only people go from the country. Um, so for me, fencing took priority. Um, but be able to, to be able to fence, I had to be, you know, have a certain amount of grades and keep up with my classes. So without even trying to, that also have to take privilege, you know, in what you're doing. Um, so for me, it was like, okay, I want to go to this competition this weekend and I want to focus on what I'm doing in that moment and not worry about my classes or my projects. So before I leave for this competition on Friday, I will finish every single thing I need to get done for Monday. And maybe that means, you know, I don't, sit down and hang out with my friends at dinner table for an hour but for only 20 because i want to get this done and when i'm when i'm competing that weekend i don't want to be thinking about oh what about this paper i have to turn in on monday and now i have to write it on the bus way you know back to northwestern um and like i said for different people that this could look differently um but for me fencing was a priority so that meant classes had to be due but then again like that doesn't mean i didn't have a social life you know that we had off weeks, we had spring where we, you know, fencing doesn't compete in spring. Those are the times that you get to spend with your friends maybe a little bit more. Maybe you, you go out um, because you don't have to wake up at five to go to practice. Like, it's just about managing and deciding on priorities. But like, there's no reason why a student athlete shouldn't have the, like, the college experience that a normal student does. I think that is a great response. And I love, you know, the conversation of, you know, maybe I can't sit and do this for an hour, an hour and a half. Maybe I can spend 20 or 30 quality minutes with, you know, my teammates or my friends and sitting down for a meal. So I think that the time management aspect in college is just so much different than high school. There's so much more independent work that you need to do, I think, in college. If we, high school is a little bit more structured than that. So, you know, really being able to iron out what are my priorities? What do I need to make sure that I'm doing? And I know, you know, because I do it all the time, but talking to you guys about where you can fit in those little snacks throughout the course of the day, you know, what do I grab on the way to this class and what can I pack in the morning that is going to help me for that 3 p.m., you know, energy snack that I need uh, to do? How do I, you know, navigate being able to, to manage all of these things at once and have the fuel to do that. So I think that there is a way to do it, but using your resources, like you mentioned, I, is so important um, to be able to navigate that. But certainly I think that it is doable. Um, I have done it, you know, I know that you've done it. So there's, there's hope for the rest of our student athletes moving forward into college to be able to do that too. So, um, and then we have another really awesome question uh, from, from our students about going out, um, the question reads, did you ever feel guilty when going out with friends and not eating healthy all of the time? Um, I wouldn't say I've ever felt guilty because like I said, I, I, I was very aware of what I needed to prioritize. So that meant, okay, tonight I know all my friends are out. My, well, my friends were not athletes maybe, but I need to stay in because, you know, I have to be up at, 5 a.m. to go to rehab and then I have practice at 6 30 mm -hmm. or because I'm leaving for competition tomorrow and I don't want to be feeling exhausted and like I didn't get enough sleep on the bus like I want to be like when I'm on the bus I want to be like oh this is just a regular day and I'm like doing work on the bus because if I'm sleeping all day then I'm I'm like you know I'm feeling weird the next day at competition so like I think again just making those choices and, and I think as a student athlete going into college, like, that's something you need to acknowledge that your, your life is not going to look like a normal student's life at all times. You're going to have to make sacrifices and you're going to have to prioritize your classes and your athletic you know, responsibilities, maybe sometimes more than um, someone who doesn't have those responsibilities and can just do whatever they want sometimes because you're not going to be able to do that if you want to perform and you know show up for your team or for yourself and for your coaches, whatever it is. 
Um, but like, yeah, but I also don't think that again, it's like either this or that, like there's, there are times to have fun. There are times to have unhealthy snacks. There's, there's times to when you're of age, you know, go drink with your friends. Like so I, yeah, I don't think it's one or the other. And I don't think there's any reason to feel guilty. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think we, you know, we talk about this too, is that, you know, if you do, you know, again, you mentioned if you're of age and you have a drink with dinner or something that is not going to undo, you know, all the progress that you've made, nor is, you know, going out and having a couple slices of pizza with your friends, that's also not going to undo anything. So I think, you know, you definitely want to have some tenants, right? Like you mentioned to work around where you want to make sure that you're prioritizing the nutrition, having healthy foods, getting enough sleep, you know, making sure that you're not, you know, burning the midnight oil six days out of the week and then trying to go turn around and compete. Um, but also, recognizing that there are times when you can go out and have fun. There are times when you can choose foods that maybe aren't necessarily as nutritious, but taste really good. And you know, you're out with your friends and, and that's what they're ordering. And you want to enjoy that too. There's a way to have it all. It's just a matter of how often you do that, um, you know, what your choices are. And really, it sounds like the timing too, you know, in season when you really have to be mentally and physically on point um, to be able to, to do that stuff, it's important to be able to, you know, recognize that maybe going out a couple of days a week isn't necessarily a great idea or, you know, really focusing on your dinners being really helpful if you do have a, to wake up early and, and either practice or compete the next day. So I think there is definitely a balance. And I think, you know, uh, you can have more flexibility in the off season, like you mentioned too, when you're not fencing as diligently every day to be able to do that. So I think that's really good words of advice, um, you know, for our, for our student athletes moving forward, that there is a balance and there is a way to do it, but ask for help, you know, if you need to help, need help navigating that stuff too. And then really, I kind of want to wrap up with just asking you, you know, leaving on a high note and asking you some questions, um, you know, about, about your performance. So can you tell us what maybe your favorite moment as a collegiate athlete was, or just something, you know, where it really clicked for you and you were kind of in your element and, uh, and talk a little bit about those experiences. Cause we all like to hear, hear positive things of, of late. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my high moment would be, um, the first, so in 2018 season, when I, so that was just when basically I'd come back from my um, tibia injury and I had a very solid season where I had already, before that season, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, this season is gonna be me coming back. I'm not trying to like reach anything or make any big goals. Mm -hmm. The next season starting, which was the 2018 season, I was like, you know, this is the year I, I know I want to qualify for the NCAAs and I will do whatever it takes to do that. Um, and in fencing, you qualify through something called regionals. So for us being in Midwest, it's Midwest regionals. Um, and I went to regionals being, and four people qualify for my weapon in, um, in fencing. And I went there, I was like, you know what, no matter what happens, um, my only goal, I don't care what my result is during the day, I just want to be able to qualify because it, it, it's a it's a calculation of your results from that day, but also an addition of how you did during the in season. Um, so I hadn't done very well in season. I was solid, but not great. Um, but going in, I was like, you know, I just want to qualify. And I actually ended up winning the whole region that day um, and got an automatic qualification to NCAA. So I didn't have to worry about how I did during, um, during the season. That was definitely the highest moment, be not only because I, you know, I, I, I went there and did what I do um, did what I wanted to do, which was to qualify, but also won in a region that is very, very difficult and had some very solid fencers that actually went on to win NCAAs that year. Um, for me, just being able to be like, you know, like it only takes one day um, when you're concentrated and you slept well the day before and, you know, your, your mind was open and you had good nutrition and that's all it takes to win sometimes, especially in fencing. Um, and for me to be able to prove that after a tough season was just, it was just so rewarding. Absolutely. I think you hit it, you know, hit the nail on the head too with it being that it only really takes, you know, a couple decisions to influence so much and gives you this, you know, really awesome experience that you'll never forget. And you can probably look back on and remember and, you know, cherish for, for your lifetime and mentioning that good sleep and the right nutrition choices and, you know, the right decisions leading up to it leads you to peak at the right time, which was perfect. And so allowed you to you help meet your goals. Um, and I think that's really important for any athlete to remember too, is that it doesn't matter really what 
what happened in the past and it doesn't matter what's going to happen in the future. But if you can really dial in and focus and do some self-care and really important things that you can achieve your goals and you can end up with some really great, awesome experiences, which is fantastic. So um, I know I was excited for you when it happened. <laughs> I know you were excited too. So <laughs> great. Um, and then really lastly, I kind of want to wrap up and just ask, you know, what's next for you and what can we look forward to, um, you know, as far as athletically, but also professionally, you know, what do you want to achieve? What are your next endeavors with your professional career too? And, and leave us with a little bit of insight on, um, on what, what's next for you. Yeah. So um, I'm about to complete my graduate degree. Um, so in August, I'll be done and hopefully starting to work um, as a journalist somewhere. Um, hopefully in Chicago, we'll see. Um, and that's also when I'll, I had taken like kind of like a 12 month break um, from fencing where I wasn't competing um, like professionally. I was just training to keep in shape this past year. Um, but starting August, I will be starting to train for the 2024 Olympics. Um, so I'll be back on track, um, you know, going hard with everything um, having to be more, um, balanced with the things I do, but also, you know, balancing work life and like, you know, being an adult now, um, with a very demanding sport in terms of time, but also, you know, nutrition, sleep and that kind of stuff. And it's not necessarily that easy with being a journalist, just cause you know, you're out reporting most of the time. Um, you skip meals and you don't sleep cause you have a deadline and just, you know, being aware of those things and keeping in mind that, you know, I'm training for something way bigger um, than, you know, uh, national competition now. Um, so just being aware of those things at all times, but also, you know, being good at my job. <laughs> yeah. And I think working with, with me and, and with all everyone at Northwestern has given you so many more tools in your toolbox and things to be able to deal with all of those time management issues that come up, relying on what you've learned in college to be able to go forward from here in your professional career and be able to navigate both the, the work life and the sport life and your social life and all of those things, the skills that you learned here will definitely propel you forward and, and hopefully lead you to success. So you kind of know what to do and you can pull back on, on those experiences. So our hope is that, you know, our student athletes can take some of this knowledge and information and apply it now so that they can really get a head start on, you know, their collegiate career and really learn these things and start to implement them as they go through their career. I know that I wish I would have had this knowledge as a, you know, 14 year old or 15 year old moving into college, but I didn't really learn about this stuff until after college. So I look back and I think like, how much better could I I've been and if I just would have implemented these things. So this is all really, really great advice. Um, and, you know, that it concludes all of our questions for today. But I want to thank Amina for her time and wonderful, insightful contributions and advice for our student athletes. And for our students, I really hope that this interview today kind of motivated you to dedicate a little bit more time and effort to your self-care, including nutrition, but also prioritizing sleep and, you know, your medical care and all of those other things to support optimal, uh, health and performance. So um, I want to leave us with everyone. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll hopefully see you guys all soon, maybe next year at the conference too. So again, thank you, Amine, for, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.